This indicates you've leveled the monitors. Okay, now that the PA is tuned and ready to go, we can turn our attention to the next step, getting the band amplified. In this upcoming segment, we'll show you how to amplify a typical four-piece band using mics and direct boxes. We'll also take a close look at how microphones work and which mics are better for live sound reinforcement. Also, we'll pass along some useful tips and techniques about amplifying different kinds of instruments. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of live sound reinforcement. Welcome back. Amplifying the band involves setting up microphones and direct boxes to capture the best sound of an instrument on its way to the console so that it can be processed and mixed. However, like everything in live sound reinforcement, there's a right way and a not so right way to do that. In this segment, we're going to examine some time proven techniques for amplifying a basic four piece band. Dave, first, is there a standard process you use when you amplify a band? It depends. If I'm working with the same band every night, then yes, because I know what the drummer needs. I know what kind of keyboard rig I've got. Basically, I know what I need to do. Okay, well, what are some of the first things you do? Well, first, I like to get the mic stands up, then the mics, then run mic cables, then connect the direct boxes, then make sure everything is connected to the snake. Let's talk first about microphones. We know that all microphones perform the same function, but they do it in different ways. Why is that important for a sound engineer? Because the process by which, say, a ribbon microphone works makes it far more fragile than a dynamic. So there's a question of durability. Yes, and that's a huge concern as a live sound engineer. All it takes is for a drummer to smack your real expensive ribbon microphone and ruin it for you to learn that lesson. <laughs> so don't use ribbon mics. Okay, so what mics do we use for sound reinforcement? Primarily dynamic and condenser mics. Well, let's get technical for a moment. How does a dynamic mic work? Inside a dynamic microphone, there is a moving coil within a magnetic casing. Sound waves strike a thin plastic membrane or diaphragm, which vibrates in response. A small coil of wire is attached to the rear of the diaphragm and vibrates with it. The voice coil itself is surrounded by a magnetic field created by a small permanent magnet. It's the motion of the voice coil in this magnetic field, which generates the electrical signal corresponding to the sound picked up by a dynamic mic. That's almost exactly how a loudspeaker works, except in reverse. So what makes a dynamic mic good for sound reinforcement? Dynamic or moving coil microphones are very, very durable. Plus, they're cost effective, and they can handle just about any live sound reinforcement situation. So cost, durability, and design. OK, what about condensers? In a condenser mic, sound waves vibrate a very thin metal or metal-coated plastic diaphragm. The diaphragm is mounted just in front of a rigid metal or metal-coated ceramic backplate. This assembly has the ability to store a charge or voltage. When the element is charged, an electric field is created between the diaphragm and the backplate, proportional to the spacing between them. It's the vibration of this spacing due to the motion of the diaphragm relative to the backplate that produces the electrical signal corresponding to the sound picked up by a condenser microphone. Condensers are capable of extremely high quality output. Plus, they have really good high frequency response. This makes them a real good choice for high hats and overheads. But condensers require separate power, don't they? Yes, they require 48 volt phantom power, supply either from the mixer or separate power supplies for each microphone. Dave, other considerations are there when selecting mics for live sound reinforcement? I would say directional response and proximity. Explain those two terms. Well, without getting too scientific, a microphone is designed to accept and reject sound waves from the front, the back, and the sides of the diaphragm. The pattern by which the mic does this is called the mic's directional response. What's important about that? Well, in live sound applications, you often have several high volume sound sources next to each other. Using a microphone with a narrow directional pattern, such as a super or a hypercardioid pattern, allows you to better isolate the sound source. As Dave said, a microphone's sensitivity to sound relative to where the sound is arriving is called the mic's directional pattern. Microphone manufacturers a polar pattern to graphically represent the mic's sensitivity in a 360 degree area around the mic, with the mic being in the center and zero degrees being the front of the mic. 
Generally, microphones fall into one of three basic directional patterns, omnidirectional, bidirectional, and unidirectional. Microphones that are omnidirectional and bidirectional provide the least use to the sound engineer. The omnidirectional mic is sensitive to sound coming from all angles. As a result, an omni cannot be aimed away from undesired sources, which can result in feedback and other problems. The bi-directional mic allows sound to enter from the front and the rear. Although this may be useful for certain stereo techniques in the recording studio, it's rarely useful in live sound applications. The most useful directional pattern is the unidirectional microphone pattern. This is because it's most sensitive to sound arriving from one particular direction and less sensitive at other directions. As a result, unidirectional microphones isolate the desired sound from unwanted off-axis sound, as well as ambient noise. The most common type of unidirectional pattern is the cardioid pattern, which resembles a heart-shaped pattern. There are two variations of this pattern which are also important, the supercardioid and the hypercardioid. While the cardioid is least sensitive at the rear, when placed properly, the super and hypercardioid mic can provide more focus pickup and less ambient noise than the cardioid pattern. So, what's proximity? Come on, let me show you. It's a mixer. With certain mics, such as mics with cardioid patterns, the closer you get to the sound source, the louder the low frequencies become in comparison to the higher frequencies. And it's more noticeable at distances shorter than four inches.
just open our mouths and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord now. Let's thank him for his good. Let's appreciate the name of the Lord for he's a wonderful God. Let's thank him for the good things he, he has always been doing in our lives. He is the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. Let's appreciate his name for he's ever faithful. Let's thank him because he is good. He's a miracle worker. He's the I am that I am, the bright and morning star. Let's appreciate the name of the Lord. Thank him for everything he has done in our lives as individuals, as a church, as a fellowship. Let's open your mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord. You can keep quiet if God has done nothing in your life that's worth you thanking him. But if he has been good to you, then open your mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord. For he's a faithful God. He never fails. He never fails. Open your mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord. Thank him for he's a wonderful worker. Open your mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord. Give thanks to him. Appreciate his name. We just finished singing now. Open your mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord. Thank him for providing for you, for giving us peace, for giving us the ability to gather as a denomination here. If you should look at even in Nigeria, there are some places whereby we cannot gather like this as, as believers because of security reasons, but here we are gathered. Let's open our mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord for providing for us, for giving us peace, for making it possible for we to gather in his presence. Let's open our mouth and thank him. Just two weeks ago, we traveled to far places for our mission outreach, and we are back. Yesterday, we went for excursion. We, the FOICA members, went for excursion. And we are back. Nobody had accident on the way. Nobody lost his or her life. Nobody sustained any form of injury. These are all the mercies of God upon our lives. It is not because we are too righteous, neither because we are too holy, but it is by his mercy upon our lives. Between the space of when we wake up, woke up this morning till now, several people have passed on to glory, but we were here. It's not because we are too righteous. It's not because of our power. But God has been faithful to us. Why not open your mouth and thank him? Why not open your mouth and thank him? For he's ever faithful. Let's open our mouth and pray specifically for Koika now that God himself will keep holding us as a fellowship. If you are a member of Koika, then pray for the fellowship. If you are not a member, then pray for Koika. God has been keeping us for, past, for, for several years now. Let's pray that nobody, we as a member of this fellowship, die prematurely. We all fulfill our purpose on earth here. We will live to represent God. We will live to be ambassadors of Christ anywhere we find ourselves, in our workplace, in our schools, at homes, and everywhere. Let's open our mouth and pray that God should give us the ability and the power. The grace to be ambassadors of Christ. The grace to, to, to serve him and to be like him. As a fellowship, I'm sure we are facing several challenges, but let's pray that God himself will keep giving us the strength to skate through all these challenges. To overcome them all. As a fellowship, the devil is fighting hard, but he, he, let's pray that God himself will keep sustaining us that he will never the devil will never prosper. He will never succeed in taking anybody away from us. Pray for Poika that any member of Poika that has not given his or her life to Christ, God himself will arrest such an individual. Majority of us are students and currently now I'm uh, also on strike. 
we spent about two months plus getting to three now that were not in class in our classes. Let's open our mouth and pray that God Himself will touch the lives of people who are responsible for this strife. That swift actions will be taken and everybody will go back to their normal various classes. Let us also pray for those who are seeking admission that God Himself will see us through. Our members who are seeking for admission that God will see, will see us through, that He will make our heart desires come true. It is the desire of God that every one of us will prosper and succeed. Let's, well, let's pray that God Himself will make us progress in life. Let us also pray for those who are seeking for jobs. That God Himself will provide jobs for us. Some people will, after graduating, they will wait for five, ten years without getting any job. That is the reality of our country. But let's pray that God Himself will be with us. He will make the jobs that we are seeking for available for us at the right time, according to His will. Let us also pray for those of us that are above the, the age of getting married marriage, that God himself will help us to find the right spouse, that we will never miss it in marriage, that God himself will help us to, to find the right people in our lives, people that will help us fulfill purpose, people that will be our helper, people that will love us as Christ loved the church. These are the type of people that we should pray for to have as our spouse. So let's pray that God himself will help us. fellowship we have needs so let's open our mouth and pray for Foyka also now that God himself will meet our needs if you know of any you can mention it by name that God himself will meet our needs in Jesus mighty name I pray may I please request for those who saw name begin with like a B to J to please rise if your son name begin with like a B to J in Jesus' name. Our most righteous Father in heaven, I appreciate your name this morning. I thank you for these uh, souls that are standing up in your presence. Father, I pray for them that none of them will miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. As they honor you by standing in our presence today, Father, I pray for them that may you meet their needs according to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. In, your, in their lives, your will will be done. In their families, Father, we pray that let your glory shine in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for them that as their heart desires for them to represent Christ anywhere they find themselves. May you make that people in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything they are looking for, Father, I pray that may you grant them according to their needs. Thank you, Father, for answering your prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. May you please be seated. Uh, Heavenly Father, we appreciate your name this morning. We thank you for the opportunity you've given to us to be gathered in your presence once again. We worship your name in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for making it possible for we to have uh, this uh, anniversary today. Though we had a lot of challenges preparing and planning for this anniversary, but Father, you were there with us. You never made it impossible for us to have this anniversary. We thank you, Father, for that in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for making the resources needed for this anniversary to be a success possible for us. We always thank you for providing for us. We pray that as we are progressing in this service today, Father, we pray and we invite your presence. May your presence come and be with us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. The scripture reading will be for three passages. So the first one. Matthew 4, chapter 18 to 22. Matthew 4, 18 to 22. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, 
follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Matthew 7, 21 to 28. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and floods came, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished all this saying, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. The last one, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A warm welcome to all worshippers, even as we rejoice with the fellowship of young Christian adults. Welcome. That in the word of God, remember that in the word of God, there is power. Power to save, to heal, to deliver, to triumph, to witness, and to prosper. Be ready and earnestly seek him for this power. May you encounter his word in this service in Jesus' name. Yeah, we would like to welcome anyone who is worshiping with us for the first time on this uh, beautiful Sunday. You can worship with us for the first time. Please kindly signify by raising up your hand. 
Praise the Lord. We want to bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness today. Please, I want us to bring out our bulletin for today. And I want us to read together the prayer focus for the month of May. Want to go? I will answer thee. Can we say it together? The Lord is ready to answer us in any request, and the Lord will help us to remain with him in Jesus' name. Let's pay attention to our life and ministry as we open to page three of our bulletin for today. Item number one, events coming up. Uh, we have a lot of programs littered for this month, and we want to encourage you not to miss any part of it. We have all night vigil which uh, will be coming up uh, this Friday. Uh, we also have Family Sunday, next week Sunday. We have Family Life Seminar. We have Membership Sunday, Sikiat Retreat, and Siviat uh, Anniversary slash Holy Communion. Item number six. Immediately after the meeting today, um, the mission team, they will be meeting at their usual venue Tomorrow, Monday, the chapel committee, the ushers, and the Sunday school teachers, they will be having their various meetings by 5 p.m. While on Tuesday, there will be a combined prayer cell meeting by 5 p.m. Item number nine. Uh, by God's grace, uh, let me quickly link the Wednesday program to item number... Item number 12, the Bible Society of Nigeria, uh, they will be having the program tag, Jesus, our body bearer. It will be holding between 9th to 15th of May, but our church will be hosting this Friday by 5 p.m. So we want to encourage every one of us to be part of it. The Lord will help us as we do this in Jesus' name. On Wednesday, sorry for that, on Wednesday by 5 p.m., they'll be having the meeting with us here. Then those people ministry on Sunday, please let's pay attention to our names. The Lord will prepare us for his use to bless his people in Jesus' name. Item number 12, the, okay, I've already gone through that. Item number 13, regular worshipers, who wish to become registered members of the church, they can move straight to the boardroom now. There is a, a section going on for new members. You are be attending the church, but you are not a registered member. Please go to the boardroom or ask the ushers where the boardroom is. They are already having their classes already. Um, item number 14. Those who are booked for the Jimmy Swagger Expositors Study Bible should pick up their copies from Sister Dorothy. But as many of us who are here to book, we can book down with her as soon as possible. Item number 15. Immediately after the service today, the Redemption Voices, they will also be meeting very briefly uh, for a short talk. Item number 16, the INEC registration is still ongoing in our church. So people without PVC, they are advised to come for their registration before the deadline, which is 30th of this month. Item number uh, 17, this is to inform all the members of the Redemption Drama Group that there will be a special meeting today by 4 p.m. So if you belong to that group, please ensure you uh, come for the meeting. The physical fitness and aerobic classes is still ongoing. If you are interested, you can read through the information on item number 19. Uh, item number 20, uh, funnel arrangement for Papa James, Afolanyo, Adi Pasheyi, the elder brother to Engina J. Uluashi of our church. Uh, we commence this Thursday, 12th of May, till Friday, 
um, 13th of May. Please, uh, we can read through the announcements. This program is going to take place at Obu Ayegunle in Ekiti local government, Kwara State. Arrangements have been made for free transportation for a few people. So if you are interested, please let's put down on our, our names at the chapel office with Sister Dorothy. And please let's know that it is first come, first serve. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Uh, again, all the ushers, they are, to, they are meeting tomorrow by 5 p.m. So we want to encourage if you belong to this group or you want to join them, please let's meet together by 5 p.m. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And lastly, for announcement that couldn't enter the bulletin, we rejoice with and congratulate our own Reverend Dr. J.J. Issa, the former CDS, on the safe delivery of a bouncing baby boy to his children last week Monday. Praise the Lord. As many of us that desire this, the Lord Almighty we meet our needs in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy anniversary to all Foyka members. Happy anniversary. All glory, honor, and adoration go to God who has continued to sustain us and given us the grace to serve in his vineyard, as well as for allowing us to be alive to witness the 2022 Foyka anniversary. Praise the Lord. He never fails to keep all his promises to his children. We are also grateful to the church leadership for their unwavering support. Thank you, sir. May God Almighty make us productive disciples of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. We have enjoyed God's blessings in all areas, academic admission, graduation, career, ministry, marriage, and employment. And I do strongly believe that God is about opening more doors for us in all areas in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point, I would like to say that parents are encouraged to sensitize their children and words about the importance of serving in their father's vineyard. After all, we are the future of the church, and with expectation comes responsibility. In addition, I would like to appreciate the parents who have allowed their words to serve in the church, especially in the media team of Chapel of Redemption. <laughs> Furthermore, I also plead with parents to get more interested in the affairs of the youth, as we are fondly referred to as a family church, an interpersonal relationship will be a big proof of that. Bearing in mind that the need for discipline young people cannot be overemphasized in this present age and time. On Wednesday, the anniversary program began uh, with a prayer meeting, and we had a wonderful time in the presence of God. The program continued on Thursday with a talk by our guest minister, Evangelist Mike Agbola. He spoke on the theme for the anniversary, which is followers of Christ taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. I would like to use this time to appreciate the parents who were with us on Thursday and say thank you for coming and for your support. We had the marriage seminars with uh, the Oyes, Mr. and Mrs. Oyeni, on Friday, where they talked with us about their courtship and their journey as a married couple so far. Yesterday, we embarked on our excursion to ECA National Museum, where we saw various historical artifacts 
from various parts of the country. We had a nice time and we enjoyed a great day together as a family, as you can see from the pictures displayed on the screen. It has been a wonderful time in God's presence so far. And today, being the last day of our anniversary, a Thanksgiving service to appreciate God for everything he has done for us. Praise the Lord. To the church, we say thank you for your love and for your support. And to my fellow choir cousins, we have been called to be Christ followers. We were picked for a reason, and we are supposed to be shining examples of what God can do. We do not have to be anxious for anything. Have you forgotten the kind of God you serve? He will cause the rivers to split and the mountains to shift. Don't you realize that he has heard all your cries and prayers? All you have to do now is stand firm in the faith and refuse to back down. Your time will come. Fear not. Your response is on its way. He has prepared a path for you. Finally, I want to thank everyone from the planning committee who planned the anniversary, who was chaired by Benisayo Osawu. Please, a round of applause for her. And um, to our director of youth ministry, uh, Mrs. Lola Omokore. May God continue to bless you for all your labor of love over us in Jesus' name. And also like to appreciate um, Jesse Shio, while we encountered the traffic on our way back, she was the one who helped us navigate all through till we got to church. Thank you very much. And for and to our pastor, he kept calling to know our progress so far. Okay, we want to say a very big thank you, sir, for all your love and support. And finally. I pray that God will constantly burden our hearts to live as wise and diligent soldiers of his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless us all. Amen. Um, it's, uh, it's time to uh, listen to the word. It will be brought by Evangelist Mike Agbola. And, but before he comes up, uh, the choir cousins will be ministering to us through a medley of songs, and we hope that you'll be blessed as we give thanks to God for all he has done. the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. This morning we'll be singing some couple of songs and they are in book, they are in our songs um, and so we feel it's the best way to carry everybody along this morning is to sing some of our hymn songs to praise God. Praise the Lord. And we pray that as you listen this morning, may you be blessed and the joy of your heart be risen to praise God with us. Amen.
Let's sing this song together. Everybody sing great. Great.
This young one, some more time. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? Almighty Father, we thank you so very much for the gift of another day. We thank you for the turn of another year when your children. A fellowship of young Christian adults can uh, celebrate your faithfulness again. Thank you for all thanksgivings that are taking place today. Lord, take the praise in the name of Jesus. Immortal King of Glory, we thank you for the way you began with us in the course of the week. The way you've been dishing out instructions to us, even from your holy scriptures. Take the praise in Jesus' name. Lord, as we round off this anniversary this year, we pray, Lord, much more than you've done in the course of the week, you'll do today in the name of Jesus. Divine Master, as I bring your word, I pray you grant me utterance in the name of Jesus. Help me to speak your mind alone. I pray the spirit that seeks to impress human beings will not prosper in the name of Jesus. But your Holy Spirit that expresses your mind to men will have its way in the name of Jesus. Lord, in essence, you are the one we want to see. You are the one we want to hear. Lord, please reveal yourself to us. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray it. Amen. Please can the amen be louder than that. Amen. Thank you so very much. I use this time to appreciate God Almighty for giving me the opportunity to be with us again. So I see it more as a journey back home because I see myself as a part of this assembly. Uh, so, so much. Praise God. So thank you for welcoming me again. And I appreciate God for our Father and the Lord, the set man over this assembly, uh, Reverend Dr. Biodro Lubimi. The Lord bless you, sir. I celebrate God in your life. And I equally celebrate God in the life of all elders of the church, all the units and departments. I pray if God will continue to move us forward in the name of Jesus. I particularly rejoice with our young ones, the fellowship of young Christian adults. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And it got to my notice that today is the day of thanksgiving for the ushers, the ushering department and the sanctuary cleaners. Am I right? Let's celebrate God in the lives of our mommies and daddies. Thank you, sir. Ma. Amen. When I had the opportunity to minister amongst uh, young ones on Thursday, we began to look at the theme for this year's anniversary. And the theme is followers of Christ. God gave us the opportunity to have an understanding from the scriptures as uh, you unravel to us some mysteries about followership. And then that concept came out a little clearer to us, and the foundation was laid that Thursday. I can't go through a summary of what we, do, uh, we did on Thursday in its entirety, but I'll mention just a few things. Uh, taking a foundation from the text we read, Matthew chapter 4, from verse 18 to 22, in the earlier part of this service, we saw Jesus walking by the coastline and he came across Peter and Andrew. That's verse 18. And he made a call unto them to follow him. The Bible says they left their nets and followed him. He moved a little distance after that 
and they met James and John, both sons of Zebedee. They were together with their father fishing. He made the same call, follow me. And the Bible says they left their nets and their father and followed Jesus. And then that Thursday, we began to ask that what is true followership? And we took it from what following Jesus is not. What following Jesus is not. And we saw that following Jesus is not merely attending the church. It's not bearing uh, a Christian name, as we say, or an Hebrew name. It's not bearing Tolua Nemi, Olua Leshe, Olua Lagbar, or any other name like that. It's not belonging to a church unit. We saw that, above all, it's not even saying Jesus is Lord. And that was a shocker, but we had to explain. Not merely saying Jesus is Lord. That's not following Jesus. Because he said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. And on that day, we say, I do not know you. So we asked, what then is true followership when it comes to following Jesus? And in that service, we're able to see five things. Number one is confessing Jesus as Lord. Number two is obeying Jesus. Number three is leaving some things behind because of Jesus. Number four is spending time with him. And five, becoming like him. Those are the five things we looked at, at uh, for close to two hours that day. So obviously we cannot go into details this morning. We are moving a little step further this morning. I pray God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Remember we said again that Peter and Andrew were part of those Jesus called when he was moving by that coastline that day. He made a call on them and they followed. But it turns out that Jesus, I mean Peter, turned out to be about the foremost out of those he called that day. Foremost. And obviously you know that that is very true. You remember he was called that day and then in the course of Jesus' ministry there was a day they were in the sheep and Jesus was walking on water. You remember that account very well. It was late in the evening. The Bible lets us know that they were afraid. And Jesus told them, do not be afraid. I am the one. One of them spoke out, if you are the one, bid me to come on the water to meet you. Who was that person? It was Peter. And Jesus bid him to come. You know the end of the story. He began to sink. But then Jesus helped him to keep afloat. And you remember the account of when Jesus asked his disciples, whom do men say I am? And they began to answer. Some say you are Elias, you are John the Baptist, you are Jeremiah, or you are one of the other prophets. They gave all manner of answers. Jesus waited. He bided his time for the right answer. The right answer did not come until Peter spoke. He said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him. You have answered correctly. They called you Simon, either two. And uh, you bear the name Peter. But today, I prefer to call you Peter because you are the rock. So Peter turned out to be a foremost out of all these people, the disciples that followed Jesus. You remember when Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration? He took three disciples, Peter, James, and John. They had a wonderful time there. When it was time for them to return, I guess, one of them spoke, no, no, we are not going back. Let us tarry here and remain here. And we are even going to make tabernacles, three of them, for you, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Who was the person that spoke again? It was Peter. So he had become so close to Jesus that he could speak on behalf of the others. Even when it was time for Jesus to be crucified, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He went with three out of the disciples, of the uh, twelve disciples. Peter was one of them. James was one of them. John was one of them. But then something happened. When it was the night before Jesus would be crucified, you remember some soldiers came to arrest him. And one of them so loved Jesus much that he drew his sword and cut off the ear of one of the servants who came to arrest Jesus. And the name of the servant was Malchus. Who was that disciple again? It was Brother Peter. He 
loved Jesus so much he was ready to fight for him. But Jesus told him, sorry, God sent me to the world to fulfill a divine purpose. You know quite well that what Jesus came to act out was a drama divinely scripted by God Almighty. That's why the Bible keeps saying that all scriptures might be fulfilled. So I'm a drama minister. I understand very well that my Lord Jesus came to act out a drama. The only thing about his own drama, making it different from our own. When we do our own drama and somebody has to die, the person doesn't die really. <laughs> you find the person dying in the movie and you see him the following day. But for Jesus, he actually died. So Jesus told John, I mean Peter, that sorry, cutting off somebody's ear is not part of the script my father wrote. So he had to return the ear to the owner. But the person that was so concerned about Jesus again there was Peter. And then one day, Jesus gathered them. He said, this night, you'll be offended of me. you run away from me. And I think the right thing for any right-thinking man to do is to kneel down and say, Father, you said we'll run away from you. We know you can never tell a lie. Help us that we might not run away. Help us that we'll remain true to the end. Help us to continue to follow you to the very end. He was speaking to his followers, his close disciples, and he said, you'll be offended of me. You'll scatter, you'll run away. Because the shepherd will be smitten. The sheep will run away. Instead of them to start praying, Peter did not allow that to happen. He said, even if everybody runs away, I will not run away. That is overconfidence. And overconfidence is the bane of many followers of Christ. When you come to a point you are so overconfident, nothing, I cannot backslide. Nothing can happen. I want to tell you know, for that. Then that is the recipe, correct recipe for backsliding. We need to keep praying for grace. This man did not pray for grace. He did not ask for mercy. He responded the master. Even if all of them will run away, I will not run away. And Jesus said, he repeated it. That tonight, I say, you will abandon me because something is going to happen. Waiting for them to cry for mercy again, Peter said, and he improved on what he said the first time. If it comes to dying, I am ready to die. Master, I'm following you. I can never turn back. What did draw me away from you? And Jesus now shifted his gaze and looked at Peter squarely that what I had said either to was for everybody, but this is for you, Peter, that before the cock crows, even once tonight, you will deny me three times. And this man, the Bible did not record that he begged for mercy. He must have said, you ruined me, somebody like me. And that's the way some people are. I've been born again 45 years. Before you were born, I've been in Christ. So what will make me turn back? I look at them and I say, wow. What you need is cry for mercy. Cry for grace. And then indeed, you know what happened that night. Am I correct? When you look at that account in Matthew chapter 26, you find from verse 69 to 74. Then we'll look at verse 75 before we round up this morning. Actually, there the Bible, please can you help me, uh, let me have that on the screen. Matthew 26 verse 58, the night Jesus was arrested. Let us see what Peter did. Or oh, you have it on oh, your Bible, please can you help me read loud and clear. Loud and clear, I prefer from the congregation. Matthew, yes it's there. But Peter followed him at what? At a distance to the high priest court yet. And he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. The one that said, nothing can happen to the Lord Jesus. I'm ready to fight for you to the end. Now, he followed at a distance. The King James says, he followed afar off. And he stayed in the outer part of the courtyard to see the end. The end of what? The end of the matter. The end of what? The end of Jesus. The end of what? How? Jesus will die a miserable death. Let me see where this one will result in. So the one that was a close follower of Jesus, Abenu Boro, you understand me? The mouthpiece, the talk active, the audacious, the one who could speak when none else was willing to speak, now was following afar off. 
And I think what he was saying in his heart was, Yeah. That you were the one God called, you were the one God sent. You just met me by the riverside, JJ, and you said, Follow me. I followed you as far as I could. Now he was following him afar off. Peter of all people, Peter of all people, following afar off. So, beloved, we have people that are still in church, but they are afar off. They come to church so that no one will come to me from the visitation department at the end of the service and they begin to see me as a backslider. Let me just go. But they will not bother me. I'm far off. Your prayer life used to be very, very strong, very deep, very good. But it's no longer so. It is afar off. When you used to study the Bible, I repeat, I mean, hear me again. When you used to study the Bible, Whenever you open the pages of the Bible, revelations will come. You receive personal instructions. But that doesn't happen again. Or perhaps you no longer study the Bible. Afar off. You used to come to church to worship God. You loved fellowship with other brethren. But now it is a burden. You are keeping away from fellowship. When you manage to come, you come late. When you don't come at all, you stay at home and you wait for the church to ask after you. When they don't ask after you, you are complaining with you. You see, there is no love in that church. You, that should be a senior member in the visitation department, checking after young believers. Now, you stay home and you complain. They don't check on people in that church. Afar off. Of course, Brother Mike is not saying we should not check on one another, but we should have grown, have grown this level. Personal evangelism. You can't enter a vehicle without telling people about Jesus. You can't stay in the airport, seated, waiting for the flight to start, I mean, to be announced without telling people about Jesus, but now it's just all about you alone, afar off. But then the question is, and that's just about what we'll be looking at this morning, why do close followers of Jesus become afar off followers? Or altogether, why do they stop following Jesus? And we're looking at about three, four, or five of them. Let's see how far we can go because of time. If you are still here, can you say amen, please? Amen. If you are learning a thing or the other, can you say bigger amen? amen? Thank you so very much. Why do people quit following Jesus or draw far from Jesus? Number one, prevalence of sin. Prevalence of sin. When sin becomes prevalent. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 12, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will do what? Will wax cold. Matthew 24, 12. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Take note, the Bible did not say the love of all. Yes, the love of many will wax cold, but there will always be a remnant. So when sin becomes prevalent. When iniquity abounds, people that used to follow Jesus so closely will begin to draw back. It is a prophecy of the end times. Of course, you know, Matthew 24 is where Jesus highlighted some of the signs of the end of times, and this is one of them, that the love of many will wax cold. Those who used to love God so passionately, they begin to lose the love. The passion reduces sin like some sort of disease in our days has become so contagious. You need a high dose of spiritual vaccination to be able to maintain your purity. That is the truth. I remember when I was much younger, there, were, there, was, there weren't uh, pornographic materials. They were not rampant at all. I'm talking to our young ones there, here. To see a pornographic material, you only stumble them on shelves, I mean uh, newspaper stands. And even then, vendors would keep them under other materials. You had to ask for these materials, then they bring them from under or from in outside, I mean from inside. Pornography was not thing, a thing that people displayed openly. But now you don't need to go to a vendor stand to get pornographic materials. It's right there on your phone. At the click of a button, you are there. So it takes one who is determined that God, I want to stand and remain standing. Because sin is so abundant these days. Things, things that will call you or lure you into sin are all over the place. Everybody wants to become rich quickly. 
And you see people introducing how to become rich quickly and in very negative ways. You begin to wonder, what am I waiting for? And again, this prevalent amongst youths. You find the daddy riding around the car he bought 10 years ago or 12 years or even 15 years. That is managing this and keeping the vehicle in order to train this young one to school. And you see the young one telling his friends, by the time I get to NYSC, before the end of my NYSC, I want to ride the latest model of Toyota, the one made in the year 2023. We are in 2022. So not even this year's own. The 2023 model is what they want to ride. Why? Because they see young ones like them who are riding big cars and they think it's for, it's for me too. And then the temptation comes and you see some of them enter into things that should not be mentioned. Prevalence of sin. We live in a generation in which uh, purity is denigrated. You denigrate purity and celebrate immorality. Celebrate immorality. Unfortunately, some of our mommies and daddies are not helping here. You see your children going wayward and you can't talk to them. And I keep praying. You know, what God says about Abraham, I love. It says, I trust my servant, Abraham, for he will command his children. Is there in the Bible? The Bible did not say he will beg his children to be righteous. He will instruct, mm -mm. he will command his children. There is a place of command. I do it in my home. Sorry, this cannot go in my home. Go back to the barber's shop and correct this air. And I've done it for my children. They pick from their pocket money to go and correct the air cut. He will command his children. Why can a mother be celebrating a child that is going wayward? Oh, Martin, this is see. Look at you, looking beautiful and sexy from the mouth of a Christian mother. This is what is happening. I'm talking from experience because I counsel a lot of people. You find young people, how did you end up this way? And she will tell you, mommy never told me it was wrong, not for once. Prevalence of sin. It's all over the place. It's cheap. What did it toro? Toro, you can just get it easily. Not like it was when I just became born again. And it was just a few years ago. So we need grace. This generation sees the normal as abnormal. It sees the abnormal as normally normal. For this reason, the love of many is waxing cold. And many have become afar of Christians. Number two, love of the world. Why are people quitting following Jesus? Love of the world. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. You know that very well. For them as have forsaken me, haven't loved this present world, and is departed. And is what? Departed. Demas was at one time a very close associate of uh, Paul. There was a time Paul was in prison. He was writing a letter. He said, I, Paul, and Philemon, I mean, and uh, Demas, send our greetings. That was how close Demas was to Paul. But it got a time, Paul said of him, he said, for Demas had forsaken me. I haven't loved this present evil world. So the love of the world is one thing that is drawing some people back from following Jesus. The distractions of the world can make one lose interest in the attractions of heaven. Thank you. The distractions of the world can make you lose interest in the attractions of heaven if you are not in, uh, careful. And as a matter of fact, it is dangerous to allow the pleasure of the station to make you forget your destination. I remember when train was still very, very active in Nigeria. I undertook a number of journeys from Elori to Kaduna. It used to be fun for us. And we stopped on the way, I think Mina or Bida, along the way. I wouldn't know which was the first station. Whenever we stopped the train, we berth and wait for us to buy things. You can get out of the train. You can stroll around. Some people will stroll as far as into the town of Mina then to enjoy, buy things. And they keep their ears open for when the on of the train will blare again. Oh, then we start running back into the train. And on so many occasions, we see some of our mates, they have gone so far into the town, by the time they return, the train is going. They don't wait. Are you completing your coach? They go. 
And let me tell you, some actually missed their train because they went so far away from the train station. And this is true of some Christians. They've drifted far into worldliness that the voice of the Holy Spirit is no longer sounding in their ears. When the Holy Spirit speaks to them, even through other believers, you know what their language is? I know what I am doing. And I keep telling people when some believers, in quote, tell you, I know what I am doing. Please get closer. And this is part of their language. It doesn't matter. All this thing you are talking about does not really matter. You are the one that is bothering yourself. Christianity is not this difficult. <laughs> Love of the world. And number three, we are looking at just four. Number three, shallow messages. Shallow messages. Messages that lack depth. Shallow messages. The original mandate given to us is as contained in the Great Commission, you know. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. There, the Lord Jesus said, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the mandate the Lord gave to us. This is the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Unfortunately, the Great Commission has either been distorted adjusted, modified, or abandoned altogether. Little men wonder, you find ministers of the gospel now announcing to the world that when God called me, he called me and he said, son, I commission you this day, go into the world and deliver my people from the shackles of poverty. What manner of call is that? What manner of call is that? But that's what we hear today. Some will tell you, God called me, son, go and teach the world how to be financially rich and wealthy. That's all. No, no, I have every reason to doubt that. This is why we have messages from many pupils today that are devoid of the gospel. Most sermons are no different from ordinary business seminars. There are no more calls for repentance, no more calls for restitution, no more calls of revival, no more calls for restoration. Just how to make it in life. So when you keep listening to messages like this, obviously your heart will drift far from the master. Shallow messages. So we have many having a form of godliness, but no power as we have in the Bible. And number four, why we have people drifting away from the Lord. We have the mixed multitude. The mixed multitude. Exodus 12, verse 37 to verse 38. Allow me to read that from here. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside chi the children. And a mixed multitude went with them. And a mixed multitude went with them. The mixed multitude went with them. And who are the mixed multitude? The mixed multitude originally were not Israelites. They were children of Israel who believed they can be part of the Israelites that left Egypt with them. Those are the ones Bible called contextually the mixed multitude. So this mixed multitude, according to the uh, book of Numbers, were the ones who began the complaining in the wilderness that we had the garlic, we had the onions, all manner of things. We had cucumber to eat back in Egypt. All we have now is this thing, manna. And the original meaning of manna is, what is this? That's the original meaning. Manna in Yoruba, kilele. That's the name of the food. They never saw it. They had never eaten it. It's the food of angels. God gave to them. They had no nomenclature for it. So that thing appeared strange. What's all this? So it was the children of Egypt now known as a mixed, of, uh, mixed multitude that began complaining and the children of Israel joined them in complaining. So the presence of mixed multitude amongst the children of God, if you don't recognize them, if you don't identify them, if you are not careful of them, they can make you lose interest in following the master. You know, there are many vehicles going to different destinations. When you get to a motor park, you have many people going to different places. You have uh, the touts, you have the driver, the conductors, you have traders, you have orcas, those selling stuffs there. You have well-wishers, those who have come to see others. Oh, you have criminals around there in the motor park. 
You have aimless people just moving around. You have genuine travelers. So it is only genuine travelers that will enter the vehicle and travel. But listen, there are people that can make you miss your bus if you are not careful. And to them, it will be no pain because they had no intention of traveling in the first place. For instance, if you get to the car park, I mean to the airport, you are traveling Nigeria, all the way from Nigeria to London, and you sit there waiting for your flight to be called, and then you come at across a friend who is going from Nigeria to Benin Republic, and you met so many years ago, and you are so happy to see the friend, ah, ah, you are welcome, nice to see you again. Oh, what a wonderful time. And this man's flight is in six hours' time. Yours is barely 20 minutes to go. And you are so happy with this friend going to Benin Republic in six hours' time that at the end of the day, you finish greeting him and you go back to sit down. And you ask people around, have they announced the flight to London? And they tell you the flight left almost 25 minutes ago. When did they announce a flight? Of course, they announced, but you did not hear because you were busy with the mixed multitude. That's what we say. Talking about the rapture, indeed, the trumpet will sound. But some will not hear. And then they miss it. And I pray for us, this will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Will you permit me to add one? If I don't add this, it will not make it complete. Another way, reason is challenges of life. And just a few minutes after this, we'll pray. Challenges of life. This can make some people start following Jesus from afar off sure you remember our friend John the Baptist. John the Baptist spoke of the supremacy of Jesus. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. He spoke of the supremacy of Jesus. He said, this is one. The lace of whose shoes I'm not, I'm not worthy. I mean, I mean the, the, uh, the lace, I mean, I'm not worthy to lace. Yeah, I'm using the noun and the verb. The lace of his shoe I'm not worthy to lace. That's how high he is. This Jesus is so mysterious. We respected the lordship of Jesus in Matthew 3, 13, 14. When Jesus came to him for baptism, he said, no, you are the one to baptize me. But Jesus said that all scriptures might be fulfilled, that all righteousness might be fulfilled. You baptize me. He respected him so much. He declared the lordship of Jesus again in John 1, 29. He went ahead to baptize Jesus. And right before his eyes, the dove, the spirit of God descended as a dove on the head of Jesus. You remember that? And he heard the voice of God speaking that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He heard it. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So he knew that Jesus actually was the Messiah. But when the challenge came, when he had a problem with King Herod, and King Herod kept him in prison in uh, Machiris, I mean, uh, Herod the Antipas, you know, there were many Herods, the one Antipas kept him, waiting for the day to behead him. Jesus sent some of his disciples to go and visit him in the prison. And John the Baptist sent a message back to him. He said, let us know once and for all, are you the Messiah? Or you are not the one so that we wait for the real person that is to come. The same person that heard, this is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. When the problem of life came, he had become blind to the reality of Jesus' sonship. Are you the Messiah? Can you imagine that coming out of the mouth of John? And it's your so we don't look down on people who face challenges of life. We get close to them. Oh, you are too born again to backslide now. How can you be talking like this now? Yes, there is a loss. Why are you still crying now? Why are you not coming to church? You are not serious now. No, let's get close to them. Challenges of life can make some otherwise serious-minded Christian begin to draw back. Let's get close to them and help them. And at the end, in Matthew 26, Verse 75, can I have that scripture? Please, 74, then 75. After our friend Peter had denied Jesus, in verse 24, and, and he began to curse. You remember, he denied Jesus three ways. The first time, he denied him simply. Number two, he denied with an oath. Number three, he denied, he cursed, and then he swore. He began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. 
the same Jesus he had professed and confessed. I do not know the man you are talking about. What do you mean by swearing and cursing? Timba Motima Jerry or mommy. Something like that. I mean curse. So somebody can get to that point. Yes, but not somebody like Peter, for it happened to him. And then immediately the cock crew. The cock cock was the alarm of the Holy Spirit. And then what happened in 75, can we say? And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crowed, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. And this is the solution to drawing far from Jesus. You return to him. You cry unto him, Lord, I need help. You know the end of the story for Peter? He returned to his status as a foremost disciple of Jesus, a great apostle. He was the first person to preach after the Pentecost. He preached a lengthy message declaring from Genesis to the day he knew about how the Messiah came. He traced everything. He returned to the master and he died in Christ at the end of the day. I pray God will give us a grace to walk close to him and to keep walking with him to the very end. In Jesus' name. Shall we bow our heads to pray? Begin to talk to God. Lord, help me. Mumi dele, Baba, Mumi dele, Kobun we shu mabori mi o jowa, Mumi dele. The song is saying, God, help me to make it home. Lead me home. Don't allow the hosts of darkness to overcome me. Pray that prayer in another three minutes before I leave the altar. Talk to God. Lord, give me grace. Help me. Uphold me. That you followed Christ for 32 years, 45 years. It's not the story here. It's immaterial. That's the truth. Just talk to God. Help me, Lord. Give me the needed grace. Mumidele. Baba Mumidele. You are in the house this morning. You know you are following, but you are far off. You cannot deceive yourself. Man of God, I know my state in Christ. I know what my Bible study life used to be like, my prayer life, my evangelism life, my worship life. I know, I know, but I know the way it is now. I know I need help. You need not come to the altar. Oh, please, if you need help in this regard, why don't you just lift up your hand? Spirit of the living God, join your hands to my hand and help me. Lift up that hand. Lift it up. Lord, I need help. I know my spiritual life needs help. I've come to the emergency session of your uh, clinic. Lord, help me. God bless you, ma. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, too. Lift it above your head. You need not come to the front. So no one is embarrassing anyone. Lift it up. This is my hand. God bless you too. Oh, and you too. Just go ahead and talk to God. Keep that hand there. Let God see the hand. Let God see the hand. I beg of you, please, just stand. 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 If you are raising your hand, I want to know the people I'm praying for. Stand. And I beg, let every other eye be closed. God bless you. Keep talking to your maker. You need to join them. The Holy Spirit is telling you, dear, why don't you stand and receive fresh fire this morning? Just hacking to that voice. It's echoing what I'm saying. I know. I know there should be far more people standing because it's telling me. Give them just a minute more and then we'll settle the matter this morning. You need to stand to join them. Stand. It takes humility to do this. Oh, God bless you too. God bless you too. Just stand and say, Lord, help me. God bless you too, brother. God bless you. You know to stand? You need to stand. Stand. I need help. I need help. I want to follow you much closer. I know my prayer life can be better than this. I know it. I know it. I'm not satisfied. My Bible study life can be better than this. Enough of reading the Bible because I want to preach. Lord, help me. Stand. If you need to stand now and talk to God. We have just 30 more seconds. Then I pray. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Father, thank you for your children who are standing now. They understood the call, and in humility, they responded to the voice of your Holy Spirit. Lord, the help they need, please release upon them in the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Please, can the entire house stand now as we close for this session? Please, let's stand. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for releasing your word and revealing your mind. Be praised in the name of Jesus. We pray these words will remain with us till eternity. Help us not to recover from the impact of what you have dropped in our hearts, but let this message be repeatedly preached by your Holy Spirit so that we can remain true to you to the very end in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone responding, Amen. We will not get lost on the journey. We will not be missing on that day. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray it. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for his word this morning. We pray that its impacts will last long in our life in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord will refresh our minister this morning in Jesus' name. Uh, before we bring the service to a close, the ushers and the sanctuary cleaners, they are here this morning to glorify the name of the Lord, what he has been using them to do and what he has been doing in their lives. I don't know whether they have a special song to sing so that uh, we can bring you forward. Unto the Lord, all we have to say is, please you can dance to the front. What shall we say? let's pray. Lord Almighty, we thank you for the privilege you have given to us. We honor your name because you are a faithful God. We thank you because there is no one like you. We thank you for all members of the ushers and sanctuary cleaners. We thank you for this ministry you have given unto them. We we'll pray unto you, O God, that these ones, they remain steadfast in you in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we pray that they will continue to be useful in your hands in the name of Jesus. Even as they organize the sanctuary, they clean the sanctuary, we we'll pray that their life, their individual life, will be organized in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that these ones will not be found wanting in your kingdom in the name of Jesus. These tasks that you have given unto them, we pray that they will do it faithfully in the name of Jesus. They will not do it in flesh, but they will do it in spirit in the name of Jesus. They will not regret ever joining this team in the name of Jesus. And Lord, everything that concerns these ones, we pray that you will perfect in the name of Jesus. For them to be able to deliver their work, Lord, we pray that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from above, you will grant unto them in the name of Jesus. They will continue to celebrate you, and they will continue to walk with you in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we answer our prayer. We pray that in numbers, you will increase them in the name of Jesus. And the Lord Almighty will satisfy you early in his mercies in the name of Jesus and will continue to grant you sound health to be able to perform your duties in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because of answer our prayer. For in Jesus' name, we are prayed. I think the ushers, they have something to present to the church. Okay. Praise the Lord. 
praise our Lord. We want to give glory, honor, and adoration to our God, Almighty. The one that is able, among the able, to spare our life, to celebrate this year in a unique way, this year our retreat in a unique way. The ushering unit and the volunteers of Sanctuary Greenbow. We thank God for sparing our life. We thank God for giving us good health that we are able to do certain things. For example, on Friday, we were at the orphanage home in two places, one at the lorry, the other one at the Lofia. We just thank God for the enablement, for granting us journey mercy, and for making it possible for us to see these children face to face, rapporting with them. We, we thank God for it. And uh, we bless the name of the Lord for those that are taking care of these children. We pray that the Lord will help these children to grow up into a better citizen of this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We, vo we vo volunteers of Sanctuary Cleaning and the ushering unit of Core Chapel of Redemption, our noble church, appreciate the pastoral leadership and the lay leadership of this church. We also appreciate every member, the congregation in general, for allowing us to serve among them, just like that, since the beginning of the inception of this church. We praise the name of the Lord for this, and we thank you. May the Lord continue to move the church forward in Jesus' name.
everything just right in the process. God is with you. I want to say again that your work here is not small. You are doing so very, very good. And we appreciate all of you. So our prayer is that God again will beautify your lives. We are looking so beautiful, all of you. These past two days, you are doing great work, work, and work. When you said you were going to the orphanage, my heart was full. That's why I said I am deeply humbled. You begin to visualize when you go to that place, those fatherless children. You went there with joy in your heart. I pray for you. Joy will not cease in your work. You went there to, to give them hope for the future. I pray for you. Your future will be wonderful for you. Your future will be great for your children. It shall be well with you. To see your work is a labor of love. And the kind of work you do here, we can't quantify it. Say, I need it. Say, I want to see it. Say, I repeat it. For God of grace, Jesus, master, if we can imitate him, we can follow him to the letters. Indeed, Bobo, he was in Taba for Dury. Bobo, I live in Taba for Dury. Ah, Basara, you're breaking the old. Yes, you can say, and Jesus is greater than anyone. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help you. But before you go, let me say this. I've been having so many complaints. So many complaints. And definitely there will be complaints. There will be complaints. That some of you are not doing well. We know this. But yesterday, several speakers came to admonish you. Several speakers came to encourage you. We want to be with you. Please take heed to those instructions. They are godly instructions. They are instructions to beautify your life. They are instructions to make your work to be profiting, to be enduring, so that by the time you appear before your master, who call you into this ministry, you will not be found wanting. You will not be found wanting. So on behalf of the members of this assembly, go, go, I want about to say, both young and old, because I am seeing a new beginning for them. I am seeing them starting something new and something great. And I know God will help you. Amen. Unity of purpose is key for you. Love among you is key for you. God will bind you all Amen. with a cord of love in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that which you have brought to the Lord on behalf of the leadership and the membership of Syria, we receive it with, with thanks. We receive it with gratitude. And we say the Lord wants to bless you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. The Lord bless you. O Tisha, O Tisha. leads the way. Marching onward, upward. 
onward unto glory to the perfect day. In 421, as we collect the tithes and offerings. Still and upward follow. 
red trophy, the green beach trophy, as a symbol of gratitude to worship and honor your holy name. May this be acceptable in your sight in Jesus' name. Father, we have brought our tithes and offerings sacrificially and cheerfully. We know that you are not a debtor to any man, and you will reach out to bless everyone who has given abundantly in Jesus' name. Father, for those who are trusting you for some kind of financial breakthrough, we ask that you reach out to them as well and let them return with testimonies, singing and praising your holy name in Jesus' name. Father, that which you have given, we ask that you will breathe upon it, cause it to multiply, and to be used for the work of the kingdom here on earth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God, the author of life, the great and mighty God, the ancient of days, the one who lives forever, the God of love, the God of signs and wonders, the one who says yes, no one can say no, the one who says no, no one can say yes, the one who opens, no man can close. The one who closes, no man can open. Your God, my God, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, the Lifter of our head, the beauty of our hearts, the joy of our hearts, the one who gives peace that is beyond human understanding. I celebrate you. I thank God for you. That in the midst of all the troubles of life, your head is not drooping. Here you are, you have come again to meet with your creator, to worship him, to celebrate him. This faithful God, who will never deny himself, let all men be liars. God remains true, true, true forever. And he says, I have not asked you to come seek me in vain. You are not seeking God in vain. You are seeking the ever-living God, the one who is faithful, the one who lives forever. I beg us. I play with us. Let us continue to seek God. Let's continue to seek him. Day and night, let's seek God. And to our young people, Oh, wonderful day for you. You see, I have something against our elderly one. And I will say it. This celebration is for everybody. But see, when they clap and they are rejoicing, you are just quiet and silent. But it can say, be people can you rara? Hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, hallelujah. Hmm. You see, David, stand up. Hmm. You see, no answer. Yes, listen. It is not because of his like brother that asked him to stand up. Sometimes ago, remember, Reverend S. Oladejo said he can remember sometimes ago when David was always jumping on the pews there. <laughs> and he has become an elder in the church. <laughs> so, what a great joy in my heart. It's, the church is marching on. So, I want Babawa, I want Yawa, I just got part of our family.
Say yes, so I wanted them to keep on singing so that they would not even stop. I pray for you. Our God is a God of success. His wisdom is deeper than the depth of the ocean. In Christ Jesus, His wisdom. And if indeed Christ in your life is in your heart, in your life, you will surely succeed. May the excellent spirit of God come upon you. May the power of creation come upon you. You will go places. You will go places. You will prosper in life. You see, you are joy today. And indeed we are rejoicing. Are we not rejoicing? Are we not celebrating? You will not become sorrow for us. Your life will be beautiful more and more. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. Good. And when you have a group and they are doing well, there must be a hand behind the scene. We know God's hand is there behind the scene. But God is using people to prepare them, to march them forward, to push them around. And today we are celebrating God on the account. Where is the DYM? Lola <laughs> Dide. Mm. If you are in this church, you don't know Lola or Mokore, let me see your hand up. You see, I don't know how to pray for you. God will pray for you. God will be mindful of you. David, the Lord will keep you for us. You and your team shall be well with you. You see, all these elderly people, young and old, I want to be in. Go go and take the fair and my baby. Go go and take the fair and my second year. Go get my Lord Jack Bessini. Naja. So go. I see yori. I'll be well with you. You see, they wanted to go to one place like that. It is in the bulletin. But we received a security alert. And very early before 5 a.m. yesterday, yesterday I was there. And I told them. A wise man. We never carry all his eggs in one basket. And I said to 
If it's a fair lawyer, hey, me love them. And today we are rejoicing and doing what? Celebrating. So why you fall love? Don't you move? Come on, let me look. Come on, let me feel you. It's the only one you see. Along with Baba, wow. Along with Baba, wow. Ni Nigeria, kolo ko sekini o, ko gba wa. Olua si sekini o, olo agba wa. See, I am gone very vernacular today, but I'm just happy. I'm just happy. So the Lord will keep you for us. In the name of Jesus. For our brother, our speaker, please sit down. His wife is there. Mrs. Agola, please. God bless you. Yes. We appreciate your ministry. I'm telling you, and uh, it was not a mistake it's when you say you have come home. Indeed, this is your place. He's one of us in the diaspora. I hope you know what it's called. And uh, God is helping them. God will come to help you. God will come to prosper you. Shall be well with you. In Jesus' name. Before I go to sit down, there's a family here that in their own way of doing things, they just call together very few associates, close family members, and they say, Pastor, please come. Come and represent COR. If I ask the old COR to come, my company will not contain them. So just come and represent everybody. And in your account, I went there yesterday. I went there yesterday. And it was a great celebration. Unfortunately, I didn't go with my dancing shoe. So, the Olukis, where are they? Mr. and Mrs. Oluki. You see, they were 50 years in marriage yesterday. It's a golden jubilee celebration. If not that Baba is in the sanctuary now, he will wear his golden car. You see Mama with her own golden gaily. The Lord bless you together. Not only that, Mrs. Soloke is 70 years old now. And finally, they brought check to support mission work. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will so bless you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will march on. All your children, wherever they may be, the Lord will be with them. We will hear good news about them. You will come to live and enjoy life because Christ will help you. Let's serve in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. So, go go, Joe. Hello, I work with Psalm 37, verse 4, for you. Can we have it? Psalm 37, verse 4. Can we have it? Media. Okay? They are not there. Oh, yeah, read for us. Okay? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and it shall give you the desires of your heart for you. Okay? For you. And for everyone who cares to appropriate these scriptures in his life. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. Can we have it? Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. Quickly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismay, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. No matter how the politicians are going around doing their evil things, no matter what the society is throwing at you, no matter the anxiety in the air, no matter the uncertainty, no matter the hardship, 
no matter the, no matter what the enemy is throwing at you God has paid a price over your life that price no man can quantify you are the apple of God's eye and I bet you the battle of your life is the Lord's battle the battle of your life is the Lord's battle all you need to do surrender that battle to him he says, cast all your care on me because I do what? I care for you. Father, we are grateful. We are so grateful to you because of our God. Into your presence we have come. And indeed, you have received us because of just whom you are and the way we are. We go into the week. Let your presence go with us. Let your favor go with us. Let your mercy appear to us. In the name of Jesus. Surround us with your goodness. Surround us with your presence. Let evil be far from us. For those who will journey, the Lord will go with you. You will not fall into evil traps. The Lord will canopy over you. And he will give you his peace. He will give you his joy. He will fill you with his goodness. From now on and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives.